Hi, Ivo, and welcome to Starting Remote. Great to be here. I'm looking forward to this conversation. But first of all, Ivo, let me know where are you from? Where are you calling from? So I'm calling right now from rainy Vietnam, which is supposed to be sunny, but yesterday the, the rainy season started. So uh, we have a pure intercontinental uh, conversation about remote work, Asia, Europe, with the one common remote work denominator. Yeah, I, I thought you were still in Asia because I uh, was part of the conference uh, last week, two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, on the f at the end of the first day, I think you came out and you said, "Hey, I'm in Vietnam." And so, mm, this is nice. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's nice. But actually, at the, at the conference, uh, the, there was a hiccup with the internet connection. Uh, apparently, the, the sharks ate cables under the under the ocean, which like took place a couple of months ago. But it it keeps coming back. Uh, so definitely, there are cool things about uh, being here, uh, despite the fact that it's probably one of the safest countries uh, on the planet. But uh, other than that, you need to face some, some challenges. Uh, but this is the beauty of remote work, that we are dealing with these unforeseen circumstances and nothing is ideal. It's, it's not the Instagram wor world of, of work, right? When everything is uh, beautifully um, uh, packaged. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's one of them. Were you already in Vietnam when you started uh, Remote How? Or did you, did you no. move after you started Remote How? Remote house started when I still had, uh, it wasn't even nine to five job. It was like nine to how long I will <laughs> be able to push, uh, but with my own um, will. Yeah, we, we lived in, in Austin, uh, in, in Texas. So that was when the whole concept uh, was born. We were looking at an interesting thing uh, happening among the, the workforce, uh, which right now is accelerating. So the whole experience over possession, the need of freedom, uh, which then is purely connected to workplace flexibility. Mm, but then on the other side, um, as, a, as, a, as a manager, I was uh, hiring people and it was extremely, extremely hard to find talent worldwide problem talent shortage so this is when the idea was born like hey maybe we can help people uh, be happier like meet their needs when it comes to the flexibility freedom remote as well as help businesses um, grow but also um, by meeting the expectations of the workforce doing this um, in, a, in a different not uh, old school um, way so this is how how the whole story uh, how the whole story started actually three years ago like the initial concept so we 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 went through a lot of uh, interesting stories pains challenges a lot of failures of course um, but here we are still still fighting. I'm curious, what did you think at the start of 2020? Uh, you are already in Vietnam, so just as me, you knew you knew this was coming uh, for the whole world, right? We were the first ones who that that were hit. I was in uh, Singapore at that point that that were hit by the virus, and we already had to wear masks, and there were some measures by the government. Uh, and I knew it would it would come to Europe, and then and then definitely the U.S. How did you feel? Because you already started three years ago with remote uh, work. Yes, it was. Um so like on, it, it was on different um, a different spectrum. So one of them was like very personal and not like business related. Um, I remember we had a call with Leah Martin, the one of the co-founders of, of, of Time Doctor, I believe also one of your guests on the podcast. And Liam was telling us, guys, if you would like to leave Vietnam, do it now because in a week, no one will be flying in the world. And we, I was like, Liam, that's crazy what you're saying. Like, that's not possible, right? And it was like February or something. So that was very interesting, um, like kind of the decision that we made that we feel safe and we, we don't want to leave. So this is just like personal side. Then on the business side, um, our first thought was actually not that this is the big opportunity for us, but actually that it can fire back at the whole uh, remote movement. And we even wrote an article, uh, like still in February, that remote work is not a good news, um, that, uh, that got a lot, of, uh, a lot of attention. So we knew that there will be a lot of challenges uh, in front of us, um, not just in this like sudden remote work um, moment when companies are like, 
between Monday and Tuesday going all remote without doing this before, but rather in the in the long term, right? Because what we see right now, like we are a couple of months um, in it, um, is that unfortunately a lot of companies, majority of companies, are trying to recreate office but in the remote setup, which is probably one of the worst or the worst ways how you can uh, how you can go about it because you're replicating all the bad habits, all the things that should not work this way uh, just in the remote setup. So um, knowing that when we were entering this um, this uncertain times, we we knew that at some point it could be a big backlash uh, for the whole uh, remote community, and we need to make sure that we uh, that we help companies and individuals not just go through this uh, phase but make sure that that sticks and and it becomes a long term uh, long term strategy how is it now 6 7 months into the pandemic do they do they start looking at remote work in a different way and really um, changing the way they do things or are we still there replicating the office uh so one thing definitely changed um, is the mindset on the leadership side. This is something that is already proven in in, in different studies and also the ones that we uh, that we did, which was for most organizations the biggest uh, obstacle to even consider remote or or hybrid. Like leadership saw that it works works in a sense that work gets done, uh, which was their biggest uh, concern that people won't be working because there was this misconception that when people are remote, they're not working, they're watching Netflix, uh, playing video games, whatever, right? Which you can still do at the office as well, right? You're, not everyone is looking at your at your, at your at your laptop. You can still be doing whatever. Um, this is something that was uh, that was coming back to, to us, uh, like even, even prior to pandemic. So definitely, mindset is um, ha- has changed for 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 majority then um when it comes to long term changes companies still don't know uh, how they will go about remote um different signals different numbers but rather more uh, companies still figure out if that was temporary or they will still stay, stay this way to what capacity etc the good news for like the overall um, market is that if you look at the mm, sir, look at the reports um, from employee perspective about the needs of remote uh, of having remote work uh, or like flexibility that was always like top one top two per like prior to pandemic right so so the need on the employee side was always there right now as people got this but and here's the disclaimer um, in a very unusual emergency mode without all the perks around freedom, which is basically one of the main drivers where people would like to work remotely, but they still learn that they can be as productive as or even more um, as they are at home. They have more time for their family. They have more time for hobbies, et cetera, et cetera. But if the company is not adjusting to this new format, then and those are the challenges that we uh, that we already came across, and 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 we see this from companies that we talk to, um, burnout, uh, always on culture, right? Um, those are the things that um, were to some extent um, a challenge among remote workers prior to pandemic. But if the company manages well the time when you're working, how you're communicating, emphasizing the asynchronous communication, et cetera, et cetera, focusing on outcome, la, 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 la. So all the good things, then you don't have these problems. So the problems that we see right now, the majority of them is because the, the, the organization is not prepared to, to facilitate this um, this, uh, this 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 work uh, work experience, right? So um, it will be a process. It it will be a pure change management. Uh, but at the end of the day, companies that will not embrace it will definitely lose in the war uh, of of um, about the best talent because the best talent knows already. Hey, I can work remotely from whatever. All the perks that's real. It's it's not just people on Instagram that do it. It it it, it could be me, right? Um, so it, it it will come back even uh, even stronger. So the future is bright, but we need to really help companies. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I think uh, some of the benefits that you can immediately see, Uh right, and you can really uh, argument directly with facts like uh, uh, reduction in real estate costs, the ability to hire talent wherever they are, they are there. But communication is harder, collaboration is harder, building identity is harder, uh, leadership is harder. So everything else is harder. I'm not saying that it can't be changed, but it needs the right support and the right uh, and the right processes and the right uh, tools. And I guess yeah, this I, is where I, you're coming from as well. Yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't necessarily say it's 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 harder. It's different. Mm-hmm. It's definitely different. And then if you look at a lot of the things, for example, on the leadership side, right? Um, remote or not, you should trust your team, right? Sure. Um, the decisions should be made um, as transparent as possible. Sure. Yeah. We should focus on outcome. Sure. And then you can go with the list on the list goes on and on. And doesn't matter if it's remote or not. Like those things are still uh, still valid. So. Um, I, I, I would say that um, it, it will take time for managers to, to develop this, this new approach. Um, but at the end of the day, they will be creating better teams, um, more efficient um, uh, operations, um, that the numbers will be put on board. But I think what's really most important, um, we can talk about real estate costs, hiring talent, et cetera. If you look at studies that were showing the satisfaction uh, of people that are working remotely and the happiness level, there were reports that were even showing that 91% of remote workers are happy and would like to work remotely until end of their career. So that tells you that this world exists. You just need to take yes. a couple of steps to get there, right? Yeah, that's maybe that's why I call it a bit more difficult because it requires a learning process and to understand what are the actual differences with what we do right now. But do you see one, I, I noticed one very good trend that is happening now. I have never seen so many discussions about empathy, trust, Mm -hmm. what good leadership means, uh, about uh, communication, collaboration, and how we can make it better. Never in my life, and I've always done HR in the past 20 years. Yes, yes, yes. And once again, yes, because um, the foundation of doing remote, hybrid, whatever you you, you, want to call your, your setup is based on the best practices that you need to follow. If you don't follow them, then you fail. And like miserably, you have people that are not happy, the company is not performing or the team. So having this in mind, you really need to make sure that you know how to do it right. That's why you have so many, we can call them basic fundamental discussions about how to work, which as, as, as we just discussed, like go far beyond uh, remote. So I think it's, it's, it's great for a workforce. Um, it will, uh, it will create, uh, I don't want to sound cheesy, but I will, it will create a better reality, better future. And not only for, for the employees, but for corporations as well. I mean, yes, why wouldn't you like this to, to happen, right? But now you are working, so Magda and Marek are in the US, right? And you are in Vietnam. So you are, you are really working asynchronously with them. Or are they with you in Vietnam as well? No. No, um, Magda is right now in, in Portugal. Uh, mm-hmm. Marek is right now um, in Poland. Um, we used to have also a team in the uh, in the US, um, but from my day-to-day uh, work, I'm connecting a lot with folks in the US, like partners, clients. So um, I'm really dealing with the asynchronous um, side of side of things. But I also need to um, jump on calls, uh, which is uh, which I'm an early bird, so I don't mind um, having a call at 6 a.m. because I wake up at 5:15. Um, but still, it really encourages you, and this is something what I'm right now doubling down on, is to before we schedule a call, we really need to make sure that we know what the call will be about and the agenda, etc. And this is just one of the tiny, tiny puzzles that need to exist in the in the whole setup. Um, that it's uh, that it's efficient. I just had a call. Um, I cannot 
tell you who that was, but the global, global organization um, uh, dealing with the venture capital space um, that was complaining a lot about the synchronous um, communication that they have that they need to deal with because they are all there in different parts of the parts of the world. So um, that's one of the biggies uh, to, uh, to tackle for sure. So I ask you because you have dealt with this more than I did. I, I dealt with it as an individual and I work with companies from Asia as well. And slowly, very slowly, they learn that actually asynchronous uh, brings them value because why, while they're asleep, I can work. And when they wake up, they get something ready, right? So they can see that bit. Why do you think it's not yet working? What is stopping people from seeing this as real communication? Because that's my worry, that they don't really think of this as communication. So first of all, um, we are dealing with old habits, old, old habits of email. So people are overusing email. Um, and email won't be gone, but email should be gone internally. And, and this is something that, for example, we, we, we have at, at Remote How. Uh, there is no internal communication going on um, via email, right? Besides some forwards from like external, external partners. So we are using, for example, a Twist. So Twist is an asynchronous version of, um, of Slack. So email would be, would be one thing. Then mentioning Slack or Microsoft Teams or like any sort of um, communicator is that people are used to, or at least they feel like they should respond to something immediately. And this is the same, like you have Messenger, WhatsApp, whatever, right? So there is this feel, even if it's not urgent, even if it's not like written that it's urgent, you have this feeling in your, in your, in your head. That mainly comes because there are no communication policies and written rules, how you should be communicating, right? So if there will be written, let's say the email piece, we do not send emails internally. We do instead this and that. Or if you're sending a direct message on Slack, think if, and then like a scenario, maybe if it's um, it should be public, so put it on this channel, don't mention everyone. Um, if it's super urgent, mention this, then the self, self, internal self service level agreement is like one hour for this. Like there are a lot of things that, that should be defined and described. Um, so then people know, um, know, know how to behave. So you have email, you have Slack that for more and more organizations or like in general, like communicators don't support um, that, that the asynchronous, asynchronous flow. So there's definitely a disruption coming in, in how, we, how we communicate. There's definitely change coming that would um, encourage people to think why they write, think what they write, when they write, to whom. So like all the things that are right now like super random and you think that everything is important and we just like <laughs> go left and right um, would change because at the end of the day, if this is more structured, then the business benefits because um, it creates more transparency, it increases the productivity because people are not um, like this, 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 this disrupted um, all the time. Uh, and then on the employee side, for example, it helps um, address the work-life balance issue because it's, for example, said that we do not send messages after a certain time or you don't need to answer to these uh, kind of requests for whatever period of time, right? So I think it's like, it's at the end of the day, it's a better way of communicating, but it's really changing completely how we were doing this uh, so far. Oh, for, for sure. And I, I, as, as you, I think the same, it's a new way of communicating and it's more writing, more, not policies, but guidelines on how to communicate that companies are not really fans of putting together. Right. There's no one yet. But I think it's a good trend to have like Facebook is having right now, like GitLab uh, always had a head of remote who can take care of all of this and ensure that. Darren. Yes. <laughs> Thanks to him, this trend has started. Everyone is seeing the value of a remote uh, head. Yes, 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 yes. Because you need to have an owner of such change. Uh, without owner, like it, it touches so many different aspects within the organization. 
that it's it's simply impossible um, if if multiple people without an owner are trying to uh, to figure that out. And some companies would need someone permanently uh, if 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 they are large enough. Some companies would need to have an interim person. Um, but majority of companies would really need to go first. Um, understand where they are. Um, like we, we call it a remote work audit. Figure out where you are. What are the challenges, pain points? Understand, um, what is the current setup? Then prepare the solutions, recommendations, implement them, and then make sure that they stick. And then this last piece, um, probably as, as everything involves would be, um, somewhere between HR people operations, and then for a bit larger organizations, someone around um, someone around uh, employee experience, um, and then besides the HR piece, there will be also an operational side of uh, side of business that that would need uh, that would need changes. So those are the kind of two areas that, that the operations and the employee experience that um, that companies would figure out either as a head of remote, interim head of remote, consultants, advisors, but definitely um, there needs to be work put in into this. Budgets there needs to be allocated. focus and it needs it, to be it designed. Won't, it, it, it won't just happen. Exactly. You were talking about an audit. Is this a new service that Remote How is providing? Yes. Um, so we, we, we've been always uh, trying to um, avoid uh, consulting and, and advisory. Um, but this is something that companies right now need the most. Companies are coming to us and saying, hey, we want something from you. And then you're asking, what do you need from us? Uh, something to make remote work work. It's like, okay, uh, where are you right now with this? Uh, there are like very interesting conversations that are starting like sometimes like uh, for an hour we hear like what, what, what is happening. So basically we wanted to put more structure into it. Um, we wanted to measure how it's uh, being done and what are the, the feelings, observations, pains from different groups within the organization. So uh, in individual employees, uh, leadership like managers, uh, HR and C-level executives. Um, so standardize this, uh, this input, then run um, various one-on-one um, -on -one interviews to kind of go more in depth, uh, analyze the remote work policy or any internal rules that are around remote work and then based on this data set, then say, okay, this is the report. Those are the recommendations. This is what you should be doing. Because unfortunately, and, and this is kind of something that, that we saw from the rapid growth of remote work tools and like the, the, the various software is that uh, this is what we knew before. And this is what we've been telling companies. You should not starting with uh, with thinking, oh, what kind of new software I should be uh, I should be adding, right? Um, um, yeah, I wanted to ask you that. Do you have, yeah. uh, do you look at technology as well? Or do you look uh, at other areas like well-being or policies or what do you look at in the yes, audit? We look at, yes, we look at, uh, we look at various things and the, the things that you mentioned uh, are one of them. So we touch on things like culture values, satisfaction, well-being, work, work organization, communication, leadership knowledge, internal knowledge, self-development, HR policies. So really that the comprehensive approach and tools, of course, are part of, uh, of, of, of many of them. Mm, but we, but I would say that, uh, that we double down more on the, on the soft side, uh, of the, uh, of the house, uh, rather than just like knowing that someone is using zoom <laughs> or Slack because that, it really doesn't tell you, uh, tell you much. Not right. True. Yeah. True. And plus, I think most of the companies already had some sort of technology implemented way before, whether it was just for meeting or for, or for remote yeah. work. Yeah. They had yeah, something yeah, in so place. They, they did. Um, and the key is how they use it, right? Because you can have all the best technology, but if you have the team that is using this in a, in a wrong way, uh, or the manager that is uh, not properly um, uh, setting up the, the workflow with these, uh, with these tools, then your 
um, you're in trouble to put it nicely. <laughs> so, so basically to kind of like wrap up the, um, the audit, the audit piece is that companies are, are in different stages when it comes to remote or, 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 or hybrid. So it, it's really good to understand where you are and then we'll be building uh, cer certain benchmarks as we as we go kind of see um how you compare to um to others the other thing that is going beyond uh, just the audit and and we haven't um touched uh, much on this is that majority of companies will go hybrid will uh, they are deciding to go with the toughest um workflow that uh, was not uh, was not advised like prior to pandemic like everyone was saying how oh, you should go all remote and this is also like the pitch uh from from gitlab mm, but this is the model that will exist like companies won't just ditch offices uh and also not everyone is um is interested in um in being 100% uh, remote right so um so i would say hybrid think about hybrid yeah for sure everyone is going towards this and i've asked a few companies as well in the netherlands and outside and if they have a preferred model is this is this one but uh, it's not only Git, gitlab that advises against it's actually org designers uh, as well they would advise against because it's harder to build the right uh, structures internally and it's the the fight for power and who gets to be next to the manager who gets to be seen who is unseen who stays remote the com the way communication is run is way more difficult in hy hybrid but as you said hey this is uh, where uh, things are going so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we need to deal with it uh, yeah we need to we need to deal with it we need to address it um because otherwise if it's done wrong or if there is no understanding of, uh, of, of, of such challenge, um, then you will be working in two different companies because True. there will be a office company and there will be a remote uh, hybrid, uh, hybrid version. And this is like the worst thing that, that could happen that you have mm -hmm. basically uh, two different uh, realities that, that needs to meet at some point. So, and they do uh, happen, really unfortunately. Keep, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, a lot of companies will fail. Like this is like 100%. There will be companies that will fail. There will be people that will be disappointed. Um, but we know that this is not because of the concept. It's just because of the poor or even lack of the execution, right? Yeah, and maybe lack of understanding of how this should be implemented. Mm -hmm. I want to get a few tips and tricks for you because you've already built this company working remotely you are working internally remotely and asynchronously and there's always this talk about building trust and empathy not only with your employees but with your customers as well so how do you do it uh, evo what are your two cents three advices or five key things that you would say hey this is how remote how builds trust with their customer even if we are remote even if i don't see them face to face Yes. So, um, first of all, uh, I think I maybe with some like minor exceptions at the beginning, I, we haven't met any of our customers. Like we met um, PwC, which was one of our first customers, but that was just because we were at the same time in the same in the same country. But then, and we um, as we as we left US, and then as we were living in different countries, we've never met our our customers in real life, right? So we are really dealing with this uh, in a, in a, in a hundred percent um, remote setup. I think first of all. Um, be yourself, uh, be yourself um, and don't create some like fake, um, fake setup around you. And, and this is something what also, um, pandemic, uh, showed that, um, it's not always ideal. Uh, we have, um, kids running in our background. Sometimes we are sleepy, etc. So that, that is already showing the other person that, 
um that there, of course there's a real real person but you're kind of like already oh sorry my kids and then you can already start the conversation about kids or oh sorry my dog oh i love dogs and that really this is like the best un, unplanned um uh, icebreaker small right? chat yeah yes that, yes 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 so as, as the more spontaneous um the um the better so that the, that's something that of course like some people um have like um, because this is just coming from their character like i love to talk so i can like talk about anything for like hours or like i don't know i don't know if it would be entertaining for the other side but for me it would be like yay i can talk so that's a, that's a, that's a different story mm. The other thing, um, be very open about your failures. This is something that we also tend to see in the, let's call it office world, that there was a lot of um, sugar coding um, and, and um, a painting a slightly different, different reality, which then at the end of the day fires back and, and comes back to us. Really what people value, doesn't matter if it's work or, or like a private life, is that you're honest. And if you show that something went wrong, um, then you're proactive uh, and then you can really um, even work with this person, organization, team, whatever the, the case is, on figuring out how to change it, fix it, whatever, right? So... Um, probably as you can already hear like a lot of these things are not just like it, it's not about remote it's it's really about how we are as as humans to uh to each other which actually would be um another uh another i don't know if it's a tip or a trick it's just kind of the way how we should be living anyway <laughs> um but um be true be, be transparent because this is when people are are, are going to trust you right mm, there is a lot of talk going on how you can build trust remotely and, you, and and there is no like a playbook that oh this is that you need to say this and that no like actions matter right actions and and how you how you actually um behave Another very practical thing, um, what what I'm what I'm doing um, more and more is using Loom uh, to uh, to um, to send video messages instead of just uh, just writing. That uh, that helps in 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 certain uh, in certain aspects, especially when you're uh, communicating asynchronously, right? And it, it also shows that there is a real person there. Then you can um, uh, deliver more uh, more real life empathy um, and and then and, and smile and like yes I, I think I will end my lengthy uh, monologue with uh, with the phrase that we should all be smiling more <laughs> also at work and also when we are talking with with our peers or uh, or or with clients or or partners that 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 really makes a difference. True, but I see this happening more and more, at least on camera, because people feel that they are on camera, so they are they are smiling more. That's another good positive thing that's happening with remote. Yes, it's funny, isn't true. it? <laughs> yes, I mean let's let's don't overthink if it's uh, if it's um, honest or not. But if if they will get it as a habit, perfect, perfect. I I, I agree. More smiles make make for a better world. Just yeah. pure and simple. Uh, Ivo, tell me a bit about the Academy. I looked at some uh, classes and I saw you have some free courses, like the, the really quick ones, but you have longer ones. Uh, tell me a bit about the Academy and how do you want to, how do you plan to take it forward? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, Remote Hub Academy was built together with companies that are remote or, or hybrid. We uh, we worked with um, leaders, managers from companies such as GitLab, Buffer, Dewey's, Envision. So the, the goal was that their best practices that are um, working well for them, let's package it, build it um, in a way that is consumable to um, to others. So we build programs for uh, for managers, HR, and individual contributors. Um, they consist both uh, life master classes with our experts, as well as self-paced content, the LinkedIn learning style, a lot of assessments, cheat sheets, eBooks uh, that can be consumed asynchronously, uh, as well as we provide people access to our uh, virtual co-working space where we have a community of uh, hundreds of uh, remote managers 
managers, mainly remote managers from all, all over the world. So we also allow them for some uh, peer-to-peer learning. Mm, majority of our programs are six weeks uh, programs. Mm, every program ends with an exam. Um, if you pass, you get that so 100 questions, multiple choice. Quite some people fail at the first time, uh, but then if you pass, then you get the uh, then you get the certificate, which is also um, a nice way of of um, summing it up and and also having a credential that you are aware of the best practices. Of course, uh, then it's up to you to uh, to to implement them and 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 follow uh, follow through. So this is the academy uh, today. We are working uh, on some um, interesting uh, interesting updates. So. Uh, uh, stay tuned uh, probably for uh, for Q1 uh, Q1 next year but definitely if there is a need within your organization to to help leaders or people ops um, or just individual contributors to know how to do remote work um, come to remote how we are doing this since 2017 so we we didn't jump on this uh, lately um, we we believe in this for for quite some time and how big is the community because that's what i find fascinating is i think it's the hardest to build especially a community that is active um, how did you build it how big it is mm-hmm. yes so um, the the community was built um, was we, we started with our first summit. So the Remote Future Summit that the first one took place uh, three years ago. So that was kind of like the like the foundation. Um, obviously throughout these years, like the main piece uh, was our um, weekly digest, our, our, our newsletter. So uh, here we have right now 29,000 people. Um, so quite a crowd from, from, all over, uh, from all over the world. Then, uh, as we launched the academy, after a couple of months, we we, we launched it, the, the 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 closed community just for our clients. Um, so this is this is where we are right now. So I believe. Um, when was it? A couple of months ago, we started to uh, open up just access to the co-working space, uh, and then um, during the summit, we we also enabled people to to be there. So we have um, hundreds of people that are um, in this closed community. They're interacting with each other, um, but I agree with you that this is the toughest part, um, and I and I still believe that there is a lot of. Um, improvements to to be made on on our side mm, but definitely there is a there is a need among people especially in the, um, in the pandemic um, post-pandemic reality for uh, for more connections for more networking for 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 tackling both the challenge of the of the loneliness if, if someone um uh, at by, by themselves, or replicating the um, the environment that was around events, events, yep. meetups, uh, whatever the the case uh, was there. So, with with our virtual co working, uh, we we are addressing this uh, bit by bit. But we we just like recently launched it. It was launched like two months ago, so it's like very very new. But I think an um, interesting interesting concept. Yeah, many things that you are launching right now, but I'm kind of curious, uh, one question and maybe just briefly, what mm-hmm. keeps you up at night regarding remote work? Is there something that you think, this is hard, we need to tackle this? Uh, right now, in my uh, notion, I have nine ideas for startups around remote work, and that's what keeps me at night, that cannot execute on millions of ideas. We need to go like one by one. And this is also one of the challenges that we have as Remote How is there are so many uh, different opportunities and different challenges that it's, uh, that it's sometimes uh, hard to focus uh, on, on one thing, but I think we are, we are getting there. Any one that you want to share? Probably this is like a topic for for a separate a separate interview, um, but uh, yeah, like a lot. <laughs> if, if 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 you would think about anything that is related to remote work, um, either things are broken, like the hiring process, uh, or the communication that we discussed uh, needs to be needs to be adjusted to to remote um, to remote practices. So and, and I just like give you two very very general 
general um, areas, right? Wherever you will look, the disruption that happened uh, this year will really give uh, um, give a lot of opportunities for uh, for for new uh, for new projects to uh, to be brought to light. Thank you so much, Ivo. If anyone wants to reach out either to do for the academy or to run an audit or to access any of your services, should they contact you directly? Should they go to Magda or anyone else in the team? How can they find you? How can they ask questions? How can they join the community? Mm -hmm. Uh, Go to our website, uh, remoteishow.com. Sign up to to the platform uh, or just inquire about that contact. Um, We have a chat. Uh, You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, Different ways. I will do my best to uh, come back to you as soon as possible, either myself or, or the team. Are you the one answering the chat? I saw your picture. That's why I'm asking. Sometimes. Sometimes. (laughs) Because you were just talking about what keeps you up at night. And I said, ah, the chat as well? No. No, the chat, no, no, no. (laughs) Then then it will be really bad with uh, with my time management. (laughs) (laughs) Ivo, thank you so much for today. I know it's late for you. You need to have dinner and you have other calls as well. So thanks for your time and thank you for all the insights you've shared. And uh, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure and I wish you all the best to you and your community.